ultrasound examination tips. Liver. This is a central transverse scan. In this lecture, I will talk about the scan method centered on the portal vein. Before explaining the central cross-section scan, let's first see where the probe is located at the reference point. I think we need to decide on this first. 12 o'clock on the patient's head, 9 o'clock on the right side of the patient's desired area, and 3 o'clock on the patient's left side. And if you look at the foot at 6 o'clock, I'll explain depending on whether the probe's reference point is 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or 7 o'clock, the angle of the probe. I'll tell you in a clockwise direction. This is the central traversal scan. The liver is up here. That's why underneath this phenoid process, right here, the reference point toward 8 o'clock. Place the probe like this and angle it towards the head because the liver is up here. You have to scan the probe upwards. The important thing is that the diaphragm is here. And when you take an x ray, you ask them to breathe in. When you do an ultrasound, please stick out your lower abdomen. You have to say, if you stick out your lower abdomen, the diaphragm descends to the lower abdomen at most 10 centimeters or more and the liver also descends the liver will be located just below the probe we want to see if you do the test with your lower abdomen sticking out you can easily and comfortably do the test without raising the probe if you do scan in this way you'll see a picture like this on an ultrasound The first thing to see here is to explain the anatomical name. This is the surface of the liver and this is the diaphragm. What appears to be a bright line shading is the diaphragm. And then you see a portal branch driving in the liver. You can see the H shape here and it's connected to the right. The arrow mark here corresponds to the hepatic helum. And what leads over here is the right portal branch. The H shape is the left portal branch. The H shape looks like this. This side looks like horizontal portion. The one that goes up is the umbilical portion. And anteriorly directed tubular structure is termed umbilical portion. But I will explain this navel in detail during cirrhosis, so please refer to it. And then go up to the left medial branches. And there's a left lateral, inferior, and superior branches. When you do an ultrasound, you put the probe from the bottom to the top. You can see the top and bottom upside down because you scan it upside down. So, among the left lateral segments, this is the left lateral inferior segment. This is the left lateral superior segment. And this is the IVC, inferior vena cava. On the connecting line of the umbilical vein, this is the ligamentum teres that you see as a bright line shadow that looks white. And liver right lobe is here. Liver left lobe is here, between IVC and ligamentum teres. This is caudate lobe. The anatomical content can be described in this way. Where can you see it from here? I couldn't see the liver left lobe. I couldn't see the right lobe of the liver. There's another opportunity to look at this part and this part. But I've only explained the middle part of the liver that we see on the surface. It's the size of the liver first of all you have to look at with your eyes. Since the size of the liver is difficult to represent the entire liver on one plan, on the ultrasonic probe. 
Suppose an ultrasound image shows an image indirectly out of a blood vessel, about the size of the image that appears around a certain area. We think it's bigger than normal, or it's small. You could say that. First of all, when you look at the size of the liver, when you look at the liver right lobe, suppose you have an ultrasonic monitor here. The size of the right lobe of the liver is normal, only when all the diaphragm is shown on this monitor. The diaphragm needs to be seen. The next thing you can see is, this caudate lobe is supposed to be inside the diaphragm extension line. But if it's cirrhosis, the caudate lobe, you can see that it's getting bigger and projecting inward. In this case, this can look just like a tumor, so you have to be careful. There are also ligamentum teres. If you go up, you'll find the umbilical vein. There's something that's hard to see up there. So here's the falciform ligaments. The part that meets the front part of the liver must be smooth and smooth. If this part is hollowed out and the V-shape, if the liver left lobe becomes larger, it looks like this. You have to check this type of change carefully. The second thing you can see is liver parenchymal particles. That is, compared to normal liver particles that have very, very detailed and homogeneous echo patterns. When cirrhosis occurs, the particles of the liver look very rough and dirty. It can be said that diagnosis is very difficult to diagnose. This is because ultrasound images are subjective diagnoses that can be seen by individuals. In case of a diffuse hepatic case, it's difficult because you have to make a subjective diagnosis personally. Through the ultrasonic diagnostic device you are using, you should be fully familiar with the normal particle size of the liver. Only then should the liver be carefully examined so that it can distinguish whether the particles are normal or not. Third, you have to look at the surface of the liver. The front part of the liver and the surface of the liver this should be seen as a smooth line. If this part is uneven or irregular, it is a finding that can be seen in cirrhosis. So it is necessary to carefully examine whether the surface of the liver is uneven. In particular, if a probe with a high frequency is used to see the front part of the liver surface, it can be seen more clearly. The fourth thing we see is the echo of the liver. The echo of normal liver is not much different. When comparing the front part of this side or the rear part of this side, the brightness here is about the same as the brightness here. If you have a fatty liver, it's bright in the front. It gets very dark in the back. This is because of the attenuation of sound waves. It is important to look carefully at these differences. The fifth thing you can see is the condition of the liver's blood vessels. If blood vessel driving is normal, the intrahepatic vessels must be fairly smooth and straight to be normal. However, when the liver cirrhosis occurs, the liver condition becomes distortion. So the blood vessels flowing through the liver are very serpentine. You can see the shape of the snake crawling. The next important thing is to find the space occupying lesion in the liver. From here to the dome of the liver by raising it in detail, which multiple lesions are in the liver. It's important to take a good look at the lower part of the liver and see what kind of tumor it is. Let's practice based on what we have learned so far. Perform a central transverse scan centered on the portal vein with the probe at the reference point at the 8 o'clock position. Examine the midsection of the liver. Now, push your lower belly out. 
if the lower abdomen is protruded and the examination is performed. A picture centered on the portal vein will be shown like now. If you scan in this way, the picture like now is shown on the ultrasound image. Describe the anatomical name. This becomes the portal vein that flows through the liver. Right portal branches, left portal branches. Here is the horizontal portion. This is the umbilical portion. And the inner vessel is the medial branch of the portal vein. Among the two branches outward, the superior lateral branches. This is the inferior lateral branches. This is the liver surface. It should appear fairly smooth. And the diaphragm looks like this. The diaphragm must be drawn in one screen to see the normal size. And here inferior vena cava, it is IVC. Here ligamentum teres is shown in bright line shades. Between ligamentum teres and IVC is the caudate lobe. In cirrhosis of the liver, the caudate lobe enlarges. Then on the diaphragm line, it tends to protrude inward by this much, and in this case, it can be said that the caudate lobe is large. Especially, an important ultrasound finding of the liver is, it can be considered normal for the liver to have such fine grains that are thus fairly homogeneous and smooth. In cirrhosis of the liver, it becomes rough. You should check this. In addition, one, the front and rear echo levels should look almost identical. But there is a problem if the front and rear brightness are dark and bright. Intrahepatic blood vessels should be visible as smooth lines and shades. But when it looks bumpy, it becomes a problem again. Also important is the intrahepatic space occupying lesion. It is very important to examine the presence of various tumors within the liver.